Hello everyone and welcome. First of all, happy new year to you and your family. I hope this video will be a great start for the new year. Today, we will be discussing about push rod suspension geometry. We will start with understanding each and every component involved and then we will learn how push rod suspension geometry works. So without spending much time, let's start now. Different layouts of control arm, shock absorber, springs make different kinds of suspension geometry. For example, McPherson strut. This is a popular choice for front wheel drive vehicle and it contains a lower control arm and a strut which supports suspension and steering. Similarly, we are having double wishbone suspension geometry which is usually used in high performance and sport car. In this geometry, we are having a lower wishbone, a upper wishbone and a coilover shock absorber. Now the one which we are going to discuss today is the push rod suspension geometry. This kind of geometry is generally used in high performance car and racing cars. This geometry consists of control arms, rocker arms, springs, dampers, torsion bars, anti-roll bars, etc. It's possible that you don't know about these terms, so don't worry, we will be discussing about each and every component and then we will learn how push rod suspension geometry works. Okay. So here in this diagram you can see, we are having upper control arm and lower control arm. This grey part is the rocker arm. It is used to connect various components such as push rod, springs and damper. This rocker arm is pivoted to the frame of vehicle through this point and it can rotate something like this. A rod is connected between the lower control arm and the rocker arm. As the tire moves up, the rod will push the rocker arm inside and the rocker arm will rotate something like this. As the rod is pushing the rocker arm, it is called the push rod. Generally, in every type of suspension mechanism, we have coil spring and dampers. For example, in a double wishbone suspension geometry, we are having coil over shock absorber. Similarly, in push rod mechanism, instead of coil spring, we have torsion bar. These torsion bars are the long steel elements which provide a counter resisting force when one end is fixed and the other end is twisted. In this assembly, you can see one side of torsion bar is attached with the rocker arm and the other end is fixed with the frame of vehicle. So when the rocker arm rotates, it will rotate the torsion bar and torsion bar will apply the resisting force in the opposite direction. In order to damp this resisting force by the torsion bar, we use dampers in the assembly. Here the damper is connected between the rocker arm and the frame of vehicle. Now when the tire moves up, it will rotate the rocker arm which will rotate the torsion bar and torsion bar will apply a resisting force which will be damped by the damper to provide a smoother ride. The next component used in this geometry is the heave spring. It is mounted between two rocker arms. The role of heave spring is very simple. It provides an extra resisting force in order to maintain the ride height of vehicle. Basically, during the pitching condition, when tire moves up, it will rotate the rocker arm and the rocker arm will compress the heave spring. Now this heave spring will resist the compression and maintain the ride height of vehicle. In this assembly, you will notice during roll condition, the rocker arm either move left or right and the heave spring between them also move together. So it never get extended or compressed during roll condition. Now for controlling the roll of vehicle, anti-roll bar is used. Here, this is the anti-roll bar and it is connected to the rocker arm using drop linkages. Now this anti-roll bar is having a torsion bar in between which provides a resisting force during roll of vehicle. Suppose the vehicle is taking a right turn. This will make the body to tilt in this direction and the right wheel will move up relative to the car body. Now as the anti-roll bar is present, it will get twisted with the right rocker arm. Now this twisting force will get transferred to the left side of vehicle and rotate the left rocker arm inside. As the left rocker arm is rotating inside, it will lift the left tire up. So as the left tire is lifted relative to the car body, it will again make the car body parallel to the ground. As you can see, we are having a torsion bar in anti-roll setup. So in order to damp the spring effect of this torsion bar, a damper is required and this damper is connected between the two rocker arms. In this case also, when the car pitches, the damper moves with the rocker arm and it doesn't get extended or compressed. Note, the layout of the suspension geometry can be different for different cars, but the functionality and the working of the push rod suspension remains the same. Now the push rod suspensions are usually used in high performance car or F1 car. And the reason is very obvious. 
as you can see the suspensions are highly constrained or we can say they are very stiff basically they resist the movement of body in order to maintain the aerodynamic flow around the vehicle body also the suspension helps to maximize the contact surface area between tire and road in order to maximize the tire grip other than these advantages push rod suspensions are compact in size and you can see only control arm and push rod are outside the vehicle body and all the other components are inside the vehicle body basically it helps in maintaining the aerodynamic flow around the vehicle so this is all about this video thanks for watching if you find the video useful to like it share it with your friends and colleagues also if you want to learn vehicle dynamics you can check my playlist on that till then keep learning keep exploring